Welcome back to Everything Money. We're happy you joined us. If this is the first time you've clicked on this channel, we welcome you. I'm your handsome host, Seth. I'm here with Paul and Mo. The gist of our show is I take your viewer questions uh, to a couple rich fellas and ask them, how do we invest? How do we build businesses? How do we be an entrepreneur? How do we do all this stuff? And today we're talking stocks again, Paul, very popular. Um, and we talk a lot about uh, real estate. We talk about businesses, but stocks are exploding. We talk Mindset, about. which is very important to you, of course, Paul. Very much. Today we're talking about Lowe's. Now, Paul, I'm not a Lowe's guy. You love Lowe's. I like Lowe's. But you know what the funny thing is? It's funny you say that because I like Lowe's more than Home Depot, yet I find myself going to Home Depot more. I have no idea why. Well, see, I like, Mo, I like memorizing the store. Same. I like Home Depot more than Lowe's. Yeah, so I haven't had much luck at Lowe's, but uh, anyway, we're talking about Lowe's. I wonder if it'd be possible to go to Lowe's and memorize a store. No, 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 no. no. I've already memorized Home Depot. Why <laughs> no switch? No more. You cannot <laughs> occupy no reason. Anymore. It's not possible. You know how <laughs> long it took to memorize 40 aisles? <laughs> I should just work there. There's more than um, 40 aisles. <laughs> we're going to look at the stock ticker price, which might be what you've only ever looked at. And we're going to compare this to the company fundamentals. Why is this company valued at a certain point with market cap and stock price? And is it over or undervalued? A lot of channels out there, unfortunately, just tell you to buy everything with no reason. In fact, Paul, they just look at they just look at future projections and what the analysts are saying, which we know is a very plausible way to invest <laughs> but today, if you <laughs> today on the morning show there was a, there was an article i read it was about the space industry because bezos went to space today and it said the space industry is going to be a trillion dollars a year or something by 2040 or something i was like just go and buy space just buy space <laughs> well you can buy isn't of course there, you can isn't there a space etf or something like that there is i, I would imagine it's part empty, of arc, empty, I think. empty yeah. or something. Oh, part of our just, yes. just go buy space. no virgin galactic is public oh well, yeah that's oh, what yeah, i didn't sure. mean the ticker yeah. symbol space spce is yeah it? but i literally meant just go buy something in space <laughs> oh just, it's gonna be a trillion so yeah, Paul, didn't you not? buy nicole one of those uh the, the stars where you name your star yes. a star after your girlfriend or yes, something like that i did <laughs> No, no, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you didn't come here for this BS. You came here to talk about Lowe's, and we're going to do that right now, Paul. i got to hone the show back in, Paul. Let's just, we should like set that for <laughs> Christmas. Like, you said we named the star after you. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. We have um, derailed. Okay. <laughs> Paul, just start talking. Please. All right, so Lowe's. I actually like Lowe's. I think they have better selection of items, but I tend to go to Home Depot. I don't know why. So let's start with... Um, our eight pillar analysis for those who are new here, $138 billion market cap. Okay, it's a 20.3 PE, so just barely above 20, which you want to be below 20, and a profit margin of 7.2, also an X. It's almost refreshing to see a PE anywhere near 20 nowadays. No, it's so crazy. it's funny, if you're new to investing, you probably look at 20 and think, oh, this is cheap. Guys, you haven't seen a bear market yet. You haven't seen a normal market. This is a, such an overhyped market where 25 and 30 times earnings is considered normal. There are other morons on the internet that talk about Tesla 10 years from now being 70 times earnings as the biggest company in the world. I mean, these are just ridiculous numbers, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so, so far we have two X's on our first two um, pillars. Um, Seth, 1.2% dividend pays out 1.7 billion per year. Now, folks, for those of you who are new, never heard me say this, the reason we look at dividends is because everybody assumes the dividend is safe. It is not safe. You need to look at free cash flow to see if the dividend is safe. Because free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures, and we'll talk about it later. But in the last year, they had free cash flow of $9 billion, so they were easily able to pay the $1.7 billion in dividends. Wow. All right? Okay, keep going. Next, next one, revenue growth over the next five years, this right, Uncle Seth? Uh, last five for pillar number three, revenue Did growth. I say the next five years? Let's get after yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, uh, 66 billion up to 93 billion. Now look at this, Seth. I see. Big jump last year, 72 billion to 93 billion. Big, look, big jump. But I do like this nice growth over the past 10 years, Paul. Look at this, low yes. doing well. Now for retail, what do we want to look at? Ah, I know where you're headed with this. Where am I headed with it? Same store sales, Paul. You know this. Of course. So guys, when it comes to retail locations, it's easy to grow revenue if you're just opening more stores. But what's most important to see how well the company is doing is look at the same store growth in revenue on a year to year basis. These are stores that have been open for more than a year. You want to make sure that within the store, they're also growing their revenue and not just growing because they're adding more locations, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very important aspect of Lowe's. How many locations does Lowe's even have? I'll look that up. Keep going. Okay. So next, now from this standpoint, guys, last year was a big jump in revenue. Is this sustainable? Is it not? I mean, this is a massive jump, almost a 30% jump, jump in one year because the shutdown had people staying at home. 
there was a lot more growth. In, I mean, if everybody, here, if everybody here is trying to do any more work on their house, you see how hard it is out there. Um, so keep these things in mind. It's not saying you should ignore the company, but you need to keep in mind that this is one of the biggest jumps they've ever had. I mean, look, they went from 51 billion to 72 billion in nine years, and from 72 to 92 in one year. So keep that in mind. They have uh, 2,200 stores and 300,000 employees as of last year. That's a wow. lot. Okay, yeah. so 2,200 stores, are they international or just in the US? International. Canada. Oh, yeah. Canada too. I, I don't really consider <laughs> Canada international. Uh, worldwide? No, 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 just, just two I see. US, USA and Canada for sure. Okay. Home Depot. We have a Home Depot in Mexico at our houses in uh, Manzanillo down there. I like that Home Depot. It is actually. refreshing to go to that Home Depot. Isn't it though? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> profit growth, 2.8 billion to 6.8. Big check mark there. So even though revenue went up 30%, oh, so did profit, profit went up more than 30%. I didn't know Lowe's was killing it this much, Paul. This is really good. Right, it's great. They're doing really well. Now, speaking of killing it, killing it, this software behind you, Paul, is very sexy. And you've it is. developed this yourself with the help of Tim, our CEO. This is the Everything Money software you can get as part of our Patreon. Join the Patreon below, and you can have the software within the hour. And look at this. Paul's going to describe what you get with it. So, guys, this is the software we made because everybody kept saying, where are you getting your software from? So, we decided to make our own software. It started at $8 a month. It's currently at $25 on its way to $49. Here's our quote-unquote competitors. We do different things. Guys, mobile app just came out with it. It's phenomenal. Eight pillars, 30 years of financial data, stock analyzer tool, daily content exclusive to you by doing this. Access to me, Seth, and Mo, real estate calculator, stock screeners, retirement calculator, Discord community, cancel anytime. So this is a no-brainer, 80 cents a day. If you take anything seriously about investing, you get all of this, 4,000 patrons out there, 4,000 people who buy this software right now. Join them. You can talk to them every single day about investing. And as you enter the Patreon, you enter our giveaway for another Tesla. Now, the first guy took the money, but that's okay. We're giving away another Tesla probably this fall around Thanksgiving. Uncle Paul will swipe his credit card for a Tesla. So, um, Paul, let's keep going with shares outstanding shares outstanding now, this is my number favorite five. one this is the silent killer of stocks right like people think oh it doesn't matter we don't want to ever look at this thing but guess what 857 million that is 718 million shares stuff. look at that they're so they're buying, buying back. shares back like crazy what this means guys is when you own a share and they're buying shares back you still keep that one share but the number of shares everything's being split by is decreasing so you're owning a bigger percentage of the company the exact opposite happens when their shares are increasing. You still own your one share, but they're increasing the number of shares. So now you're getting less and less of the company as time goes on. You want them decreasing the number of shares in most parameters, okay? You don't want them diluting you. You want them decreasing it that way. That's a way to give you more and more percentage of the company without the stock price going up, for example, without the, without the revenue or profit going up. But in this situation, revenue and profit are going up and they're decreasing their shares. They're double rewarding you as an investor. If you're watching this video later, today is Tuesday, July 20th, by the way. People always want to know what date we're doing these. And uh, Paul, the last thing I want to tell you is that I just realized, well, we haven't looked at the ticker symbol at all. Uh, if this is new to you, it was always new to me, is that like we actually look at the price last instead of first, which is quite opposite, I think, of anyone you might have ever talked to about stocks is, we just have, I don't even know what price the stock is right now, Paul. So we will look at the, after we go to Trader Mo with trading, we'll look at what we want to pay for this company. It might be interesting, Paul, to look at what we want to pay and then look at, anyway, keep going, Paul. I'm sorry. Okay. So next, the next pillar is? Current assets over current liabilities, right. pillar number six, So this is Paul. cash on hand, about $26.8 billion, and current debts are? 22.9. So they have plenty of cash on hand to pay off all of their liability, all their current liabilities, mm -hmm. all money's due, all bills due in the next year or so. How about pillar number seven, free cash flow growth? This is my favorite one. So guys, free cash flow versus net income versus earnings. I prefer to go to free cash flow because it actually, earnings can be manipulated, not on purpose necessarily, sometimes so, but it can be manipulated based on SEC rules and other accounting rules. Cash flow is much harder to manipulate. It shows the cash in and cash out, cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. And if you buy our software, I added this line to make the math easy for you. So 4.5 billion up to 9.17 billion. Check mark there with an average of 5.3 billion. So 5.3, so that's a check mark. And then we always multiply by 20 as a starting point. It's not a, this is set in stone, pay 20 times free cash for the last five years. But we start at 20 to see about where the company is. That is $106 billion. Yep. And the company is currently $135 billion? 38. 38. So it's an X right now. Does this mean you shouldn't buy it? No. 
Because remember guys, you have to look at growth, you have to look at other aspects of the company. The eight pillars are used as a starting point to tell a story that tells you what questions to ask next. Because look at the free cash flow last year. Nine billion. Nine billion times 20 is 180 billion. I see. So at this level, this metric, it looks cheap. It's selling for about 15 times free cash flow. Not bad. So these are some of the aspects. The question you have to ask yourself is, is this nine billion sustainable? I wouldn't think so. I think it's housing. Mo, is housing calming down? Lumber calming down? Do you see what happened today? What they announced today? Go on. Well, was New it, housing was starts are up, but permits it? are low. Yeah. Permits are down. Yeah. And they're, now they're saying that um, the inventory, like people are really tailoring back and they're saying, okay, we're not going to look at houses now just because the inventory is getting lower and the demand of this is staying the same with pricing. So. Mm. Yeah. If you're in the Bid Nas Nation, our, our Patreon tier, where you're doing day trading, momentum trading, long term trading, you're in love as I am with Mo, the most of the wise, and he will talk about the sweet spot. Is this where are we with Lowe's trading? By the way, moving into the sweet spot. Uh -oh, I like this. But we are we're at this resistance point, one hundred ninety six dollars or something. So it's really having a hard time getting through there. And I'm going to switch over to the long-term chart because I'm willing to bet it's just sitting at moving averages. I mean, short-term chart. Let's see. Yep, it is. It's just kind of hovering right around its 100-day moving average, 25-day moving average, and 50-day moving average. So, Seth, what's it going to take to break this thing up? You tell me, baby. I don't know. I was volume. listening. Oh, just volume. needs volume. Thank you. <laughs> All we need is some volume, breakout, get an engulfing candlestick. And, you know, if, if you think about Lowe's Home Depot back in when the pandemic happened, they were still open and they thrived. So this is something where... Who knows where the direction of the world is going to go, but this is something to keep an eye on. Come through the sweet spot nicely, get some volume in there, take out this, this random candlestick right here and make a new high, and you might have a good run up to this 215 number or higher, depending on what happens. Paul, what you doing over there? All right, guys, so <clears throat> we have the stock analyzer tool. What We created this to give you one of two options. Either you've done massive thorough research and you know what estimates to put in for your assumptions on a stock, or two... Put in some general ideas as you look at the eight pillars to say, okay, where does this company stand? Because this will give you three different, six different values based on earnings and free cash flow. It's a way of gauging, okay, is this stock overpriced or not? Okay, it's asking you for your revenue assumption growth, your growth assumptions, your profit assumptions. All these things have to be mixed into here, okay? Now keep in mind, revenue jumped up a lot last year. So I really want to tailor that back big time. Mm -hmm. This might be a little aggressive, but it'll kind of show you where things stand. I did take a look and it'll show you right here. So revenue growth, I made assumptions of two and a half to five and a half, share changes, profit margin, free cash flow as a percentage of revenue, PE, price of free cash flow, and your desired return. If you watch this video, if you join the, um, uh, the, um, the software, it'll explain to you how to use the software. The Patreon, yep, keep going, Paul. You hit the analyze button. This is the first time we're looking at price, $193 a share. And it currently says, that except for the highest assumptions I made, the stock is overpriced. Well, this would make sense. I mean, it's thriving. It's doing great. Now would not be the greatest time to buy this stock. But boy, the financials are strong, Paul. I was wondering if his highest assumptions were a little bit aggressive. They were not. Okay. They were 5.5% of revenue growth. Now remember, we jumped up 30% revenue growth yeah, last yeah. year. So I wanted to make slower assumptions, gang. Hey, over the next seven years, I did a seven-year analysis you got to account for there to be a slowdown because right. it's not all of a sudden everybody just spends a ton of money. Right. I don't know if the revenue might fall this year because it's expected going, hey, listen, we jumped 30% last year because people were all pent up demand and now the demand falls back to normal, it's going to fall a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I think this is very aggressive. To me, this is an obvious the stock is overpriced. If we're barely... Our second to highest value is $7 above where it currently stands. I also had a share buyback Pretty aggressive between negative between buying back one percent and five percent a year. Ooh, that's big. Yeah, that 5 is big. Five percent is big. Well, if you look at the last ten years, yeah, it did pretty good share buybacks yeah, here. Yeah. So, guys, I think Lowe's is just a little overpriced. Keep your eye on it because it is a great company. I don't think. I think Lowe's will probably. What's their mobile buying like? I don't even know. Like, but it's, it's very point, good. It's good. It? Yeah, yeah, I like it. The, the, there's a lot of the thing that I don't like about their mobile buying is they have a lot of stuff on their website that's not in store and you can't just go pick it up right away. So that's good because they have it. It's just, you can't just go readily get it within 30 minutes or something. So another thing that I was looking at, uh, Bank of America or it was Morgan Stanley, they came out and said that retail, is, they can see that retail spending for them is starting to decline. 
and uh, hospitality and travel and whatnot is starting to pick up. So, I mean, this is retail, so maybe that's going to be a part of it. Who knows? I just, I just don't see how they sustain. How that's they take, the thing. How, how their sustain? revenue goes up to this, right. and then stays like that, or right. grows up a little bit. I just right. think it's going to go like this, and then yeah. back up yep. into this uh, recovery. I just listen. Is my am I being too conservative? Maybe. Very common, common I get. But I look at things and say, hey, listen. My money is very important to me. I spend a lot of time earning my money. I want to make sure I invest it properly into companies that I really believe in. Do I believe in Lowe's? Yes. Do I believe there'll be a better time to buy Lowe's? Absolutely. Yeah. And I will keep it on my radar and make sure that when the time comes and the price is selling lower, I'll be able to do this. Yep. That is our take on Lowe's. We're holding off at the moment. We're staying with, with, with our rules. We're staying disciplined, Paul. We're not going to go crazy on Lowe's. But uh, definitely a lot better company than Ooh, I thought. Look at so, this. What is that? During the crash last year, it got down to 65 bucks. 65 bucks. It's crazy. $65 a share. <laughs> it's tripled since then. Yep. Literally tripled. <clears throat> yep. That it's is low. $65 a share. That, by the way, $65 a share, if you saw my stock analyzer, that would have been a multi of a huge buy. Yes. Because the lowest price I have is 72 to 93. But again, last year during the crash, everybody thought all retail was dead. It was going to be shut down forever, blah, blah, blah. But this just shows, goes to show you how emotion, when it comes into play here, it can really exaggerate. You have to be very disciplined to say, it's 65 a share. The, the future does look bad, but eventually we'll come out of it. So this is a really dumb question, Paul, because I've been here for a long time. I'm sure our patrons haven't. What, the numbers that you're showing would have all not been the case had the stock price been $65 a share. So... In hindsight, what I mean to say is these beautiful growth numbers, like, oh, it's a buy, just not at today's price. But yep. these numbers wouldn't have been around when it dropped that low. This is the, the, the juxtaposition I so, can't quite great. understand. So what your job is then, what we're trying to teach here is when there are bad times and numbers fall, you have to sit there and believe, okay, is this fall going to be forever? Or is there going to be a rebound at some point? Is the economy going to recover? Even if we hit a recession and these revenues fall, what usually ends up happening is people over-exaggerate the fall. Stocks go down even further and they're selling for a price. You sit there and say, wait a second, there will be a rebound at some point. The economy will recover. It's like CCL. I'm buying CCL even though it's bleeding cash and it's now revenue dropped 99%. Literally, it's dropped 99%. And I'm a buyer of, of Carnival Cruise Line. Why? Because I just believe that when it gets back to stab stability and reopens, it'll get back to its normal state and all of a sudden we can value it again. That's the point of being an investor is determining what the value of something is when everybody else misses that value. That's it. Okay, thanks for clearing that up because I uh, I have that question sometimes. Like at that price, you know, it's eh, I, hopefully hopefully um, the days have been red of late, Paul. And uh, I've talked about this before, patrons. If you're feeling it too, I get so happy. I, I've lost like my total portfolio has been down like thirty thousand bucks the past month. I mean, it's getting oh, slaughtered. Is it? Yeah, it's bad. I bought my new Little Book stocks on July first, Mo, and they're getting I remember. slaughtered. Yeah. Oh, I bought July first at Little Book. Guess how many times I've looked at it. Well, no, no. I guess the point is, yeah, you, you've taught me and, and you out there watching is like, we need to start embracing this and get some of these prices down where we can buy. And, you know, like everyone wants to buy. And and like, I'm just the correction that you've talked about, the quote unquote crash may be coming or will happen. Uh, I'm more excited for it this time around as good. opposed to dreading it. So and you just got to remember when you buy good companies at good prices, even when times get bad and they go further down, these are not companies that are going to go away. That's why we focus on companies that have been around, not the Palantirs <laughs> of the world, not the um, charge points, not these other hype companies that have no value whatsoever because they're all on hype right now. I bought CCL on Friday at $22 and yesterday it was at $19. Yep, and Did I sold more puts at 15 and all I that stuff. I don't care. That's, I'm okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't care. I'll go buy more. Yep, it's down from 32. Yeah. To say you liked it more at 32 that than 19 discount. is a ridiculous statement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless some big news comes out that exactly. says like, oh, we're going to double the number of shares outstanding. Okay, that's different. Yep. That's the only thing I get concerned about with CCL is their issuing of shares is becoming a little insane. Yeah, not to go they on. got to get reopened here. Yeah, not to go on a CCL train on this video, but I, I really want to see them just say what their plan is going forward with buying back shares. Or, or stop, not. Stop or issuing stop diluting. Yeah. All right. That's our take on Lowe's. Um, if you love it, uh, go buy it. If not, wait patiently with us. And um, yeah, we'll follow along. Join the Patreon below. Fondle that thumbs up. Patrons, you know I love you. See you next time, guys. Appreciate it.